Cuna, Idaho, the land of the cattle and cavemen. But there's more to Cuna than just clubs and cows. Let's check it out. Before we get started, my name is Isaac Crace. I'm a third generation realtor here in the Boise, Idaho area. So if you or anyone you know might be looking to move, hit me up and I'd love to help you out. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode, and boy, do I have a special one for you. I'm going to be talking about everything CUNA, from the housing, the shopping, what to do in CUNA, what is CUNA like, and Facebook or Meta. So if that is something that interests you, be sure to stay tuned to the end of this video. And if you haven't already, drop me a like button, comment on this video what you think about CUNA, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to get notified for all my upcoming videos. And if you'd like to start your home search in anywhere in CUNA or the rest of the Treasure Valley, be sure to hit me up at that number, days, nights, weekends. Call me, text me, shoot me an email, anything, reach out to me, and I will help you get started. So what is CUNA known for? Well, in many years previous and in the current years, CUNA is known as the main area in the valley where all the dairies are located. There are tons of dairies in CUNA in previous years. Not as many to this day, but there are still lots of dairies in CUNA. In fact, there is one right across the street from CUNA High School. Another thing that CUNA is known for is Indian Creek. It flows right through town. In fact, it goes all the way out to Caldwell. If you've seen some of our other videos or if you're familiar with the Treasure Valley, it goes all the way downtown Caldwell where they have the Winter Wonderland. But anyways, people love to float the Indian Creek in the summer, a lot like the Boise River. Although I need to say this, I actually like the Indian Creek more because I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie to some extent. If you're looking for just floating leisurely down the river, getting a suntan, the Boise River is your thing, but not Indian Creek. Some places where the water gets low, you actually have to pick your tube up and walk across. And then some places there's actually like some pretty good rapids. So like I said, if leisure is your thing, definitely do not go float the Indian Creek for most of the places. Some of them are pretty leisurely. So what exactly is there to do in CUNA? Well, I think the better question would be what isn't there to do in CUNA, which just a heads up, if being outdoors isn't your cup of tea, there's not going to be a whole lot to do. But for those of you who don't mind getting out and kicking up the dust, there's a ton of opportunities for you in CUNA. Since CUNA is situated on the south side of the Treasure Valley, it borders a bunch of BLM and public land, and it's right next to the Snake River, Swan Falls in particularly. You can go out there. I highly recommend it. It's in a canyon. You can go out and catch some amazing sunsets out there. I've seen some people like doing gliding out there, which was super cool. The road to go down into the canyon is super steep. It's a super cool view when you're driving down, especially in the sunset. You can go hunting out there, fishing out there. Um, consult the regs, though, on where you can and can't shoot because it is in part of the birds of prey area. So there are some places that you can't shoot out there and what you can't shoot. Like, for instance, you can waterfall hunt out there, but I think that's just about it. Back in the day... When I was in wrestling, we used to do the Swan Falls run at the end of Hell Week, which was the first week of wrestling season. So we'd actually run up all the way from the bottom of the Swan Falls up the hill over to the bus. And let me tell you, it looks just as bad as it is. Like, I don't recommend it. If you want to put yourself to a challenge, go ahead, take a run. But it's not for the faint of heart. Around Swan Falls, there's a ton of BLM and trails, and it's Another great thing to do. My buddies and I, we like to go out there, ride our dirt bikes all the time. You can go out there, shoot. People go shooting out there all the time. In fact, there's this other fun thing to do out there, which involves shooting with your rim fires, be it your 22 or your 17 HMR. I am a fan of my 17 HMR. It blows the 22 long rifle out of the water, and it is a flat shooting gun. But you can go out there, and you can shoot jackrabbits. Whistle pigs are the most fun thing to go shoot. So if you have your license and you like to shoot ground swirls, essentially, I should have elaborated on that. Whistle pigs aren't actually like a pig with a whistle taped to their mouth or whatnot. No, they're basically just like these little ground squirrels. They're like yay big, like maybe four inches or so. But they're fun to go. You can shoot them. They're all over the place out there. Again, consult the regulations and the BLM maps to see where you can and can't shoot because, again, some areas are restricted for shooting. So, like I said, check with the maps before you go out and do that. Just a hop, skip, and a jump away from CUNA across the river is the Owyhee Mountain Range, and there are tons of trails out there to go ride your dirt bikes, your four-wheelers, your ATVs, go hunting, be it coyote, jackrabbit, deer hunting, there's tons of stuff out there. I can go out there all day long, all weekend long, and just go burn trails. I don't even think you could ride all the trails out there in one day. 
I personally have tried and I haven't even got anywhere close to it out by Murphy and all that stuff. So if you like dirt biking, ATV, razor riding, go check out all the trails in the Owyhee Mountains. You can even go up to this place south of town. It's called Silver City. It's a really cool old mining town. At the time of making this video, it's not actually open. They have it gated off. Um, over the winter to preserve the road and just for snow, you can take your snowmobile and go up in there. But it's basically an old abandoned mining town. There are still some residents in there. There's a local store, an old hotel. There's a picture in the bar in there that I actually like to go look at. It's of Tombstone. There's Doc Holiday, Wyatt Earp, all that cool stuff. So if you go in there, look for that picture. I really like it. It's super cool. As for shopping in CUNA, there aren't the big box stores like a Walmart or a Costco. So if you want those things, you're going to have to go up to Meridian or Boise or Nampa. But again, it's not a bad thing. And I actually like it because it allows room for small businesses and family run businesses to have a great environment in CUNA. The biggest stores in CUNA are going to be Bymart, Ridley's, DNB, and Albertsons. And a couple stories for you. For those of you who don't know what a DNB is, if there's anything that you need to live the Western lifestyle, be it boots, stuff to fix your fences, anything like that, you can get it at DNB. So that should cover what DNB is. And for those of you who don't know, Albertsons actually started here in the Boise, Idaho area, Joe and Catherine Albertson. They got their start here. They just built like their nicest store in Meridian. They have like a, a sushi bar, all sorts of stuff. It's really cool. Go check it out if you have the chance. It's right across Fairview from the village. Like I said, they just built it. They've got the sushi bar, which I really love to go to. They've got a sandwich bar. They've got a sports bar. Tons of stuff. It's really cool. And the fresh produce section is amazing. Adding to the small business aspect of CUNA, everything that it takes to have a great area for a small business to run, community support, everybody's got your back and everybody supports each other is 100% what CUNA is. That's the mentality of CUNA, which makes it a great place for small businesses, like I said. And speaking of small businesses, I highly recommend you go check out Orion Armament in CUNA. It's right next to the Pride Martial Arts. And check this out one second. I just picked up this sick Ithaca Mag 10 10 gauge shotgun from them a couple months ago. It will be with me out in the goose pit this upcoming season. But like I said, if you get a chance, go check them out. It's a great small business. They are super friendly and they just opened up this past October. So October of 2021. Like I said, go check them out. They're right next to Pride Martial Arts in CUNA. So what's going on with the housing in CUNA? There are currently 67 homes for sale with a median asking price of $525,000. However, of those 67 currently on the market right now, 48 of those are new construction homes, with the majority being built by the larger production builders in the valley like CBH, Hubble, and Toll Brothers, along with multiple custom builders, which I will have listed in the description below. Since new construction is going to make up the majority of the housing inventory in CUNA, let's dive a little deeper, starting with CBH or Corey Barton. Corey Barton currently has five active communities that they are building in, Spring Hill, Silver Trail, Dolores, Arbor Ridge, Ledgestone, along with three new communities where they are going to be seeing shortly, Malaspina Ranch, Madrone, and Ardell Estates. With CBH, in previous years, you used to be able to go in and make selections like carpet, paint, cabinets, countertops, that kind of stuff, but as of now, they're only doing spec homes, so you can't go in and make any selections. Now, that's not to say that all of them are, you know, lick and stamp. They're all exactly the same. Some of them come with different trim levels essentially if you're a car person but different packages flooring countertops cabinets like i said before now if you want a cbh home you're going to be looking at the high 400s and they do go up way above there as for hubble homes they currently have two communities greyhawk and red cloud with a future community sarah soul on the way as of now you can still get into a hubble home in cuna in the low 400s now i want to make a note Looking at CBH and Hubble homes side by side, the high 400 to the low 400, it may seem like Hubble is building lesser quality homes when that's absolutely not the case. They are very similar in quality. The difference is that CBH focuses on the bigger homes and Hubble builds more smaller homes. So that's what gives the illusion that they are cheaper when in fact they are very similar. In fact, I am actually a fan of Hubble. I have multiple clients building with Hubble in Nampa and Caldwell. I really like the way that their floor plans flow. Now, contrary to CBH, 
where CBH is only building spec homes. Hubble, you can actually go in and make selections, and that's going to be the majority of what Hubble is doing right now, semi-custom to an extent. You can go and pick your countertops, your cabinets, your flooring, simple stuff like that. Maybe add on a third garage bay, make the make the driveway wider. My bad. You can make the patio bigger, covered patio, that kind of stuff. So CBH, you can only do spec homes as of now. Hubble, you can go in and make your selections and do a custom build job. So the difference in that with CBH, their wait time is going to be about 30 to 45 days. They only put their homes on the market once the cabinets are hung as a reference. So that 30 to 45 days, whereas with Hubble, they don't do spec homes. If there is a home that is already being built, that's because most likely it went under contract and then it fell out of contract. So now it's back on the market. But because they're doing the semi-custom builds, your wait time could be as much as a year right now, given that we don't have any supply chain issues like we have seen in previous years. So that would be the deciding factor if you're trying to choose between Hubble or CBH, in my opinion, is the time frame, 30 to 45 days or closer to a year. If you need that quick move in, I would definitely look at CBH. But if you don't mind the wait and you've got time and you would like to make some selections, I definitely give Hubble a look. Last but not least, we've got Toll Brothers, which you might be familiar with. Unlike CBH and Hubble, which are solely local builders, Toll Brothers is a nationwide builder. At the moment, Toll only has one active community, Sterling Ranch, with another one, Paloma Ridge, on the way. As of now, you can still get into a Toll Brothers home in the low 500s. Now, Toll Brothers, along with Hubble Homes, does the majority semi-custom builds, so you can go in, make your selections, flooring, carpet, countertops, paint colors, cabinets, that kind of stuff. As far as custom subdivisions go in CUNA, there's Patagonia, Casador, Laguna Terra, Falcon Crest, Sterling Ranch, and there's another cool development that's just starting. It's called Indian Creek Village. It's right next to the Indian Creek, so you can go put your tubes in Indian Creek. There's like half acre lots over there. Super cool area, plus a new 55 and over resort style community, Trilogy at Valor. They're going to have golfing, fitness classes, tennis, and tons of other stuff. It's going to be a really cool community to see once it's done. In fact, I think phase one is already sold out. So looks like it's in pretty high demand. As for schools in CUNA, it has three high schools, Swan Falls High School, Initial Point High School, and CUNA High School, as well as two middle schools, and six elementary schools. As for daycares in CUNA, there are eight daycares. Kim's Daycare, Deer Flat Child Care, Kids Independent, Little Critters Daycare, Busy Bee Daycare, Sunshine Daycare, CUNA Care Kids, and Small Wonders Daycare. In preparation for this video, my team reached out to see what the locals' pros and cons would be of living in CUNA, Idaho. So without further ado, these are the pros and cons of living in CUNA, Idaho. Let's start off with the cons. So there aren't a whole lot of cons, but there are a few, and they can be attributed to one main thing, the rapid growth of CUNA. A lot of subdivisions going up, many people coming in, the infrastructure can't handle it. The roads are constantly crowded, so construction is always occurring. Next, the sewer system is attributed to the growth. It is overwhelmed. It can't handle all of the growth. Another thing about that, I'm going to touch on that shortly further on in the video. Another con attributed to the growth is the water table. Many of the places around Idaho in the homes are watered off of wells. They have their wells out on the ground. They're not connected to city water. Now, a little backstory for you. Idaho's aquifer, 70% is fed by irrigation water. Since it's a desert, we have to run our irrigation water into canals to water our crops. Whereas places back east, they just have natural rain. We don't have that. If we don't water our crops, you get dirt, soil, sand. It's very fertile, but if there's no water, then it's useless. So like I said, Idaho's aquifer and water table in the Treasure Valley, 70% fed by irrigation. With less farmland, less fields, less crops being irrigated, more homes, the water table is going down and down and down. And we are in a drought this year, actually. Last year, we started to have issues with people's wells going dry. That's a big issue. And if you know anything about drilling well, it's not cheap. So there's an issue be between people having fixed income and now their well's dry. They don't have water. So what do you got to do? You got to go in and drill the well deeper. They don't necessarily have the money for that. So I'm not exactly sure what solution there could be. Maybe slow down on the building. Who knows? If you have an idea... Bring it in the comments section below. I'd love to hear it. There isn't a whole lot of shopping in CUNA, 
And that's actually not really a bad thing. I mean, it's a bit of an inconvenience for those who want to be right next to shopping. But if that's the case, then Kuno really isn't going to be your thing. You can either have the small town or you can have the shopping. So if you want to be right next to the shopping, then I suggest you look closer to like Meridian, Eagle, Boise, Nampa, or Caldwell, where they have more shopping. In Cuna, you got your family-owned businesses and your small businesses. So like I said, aside from the Ridley's, Bymart, DMB, and Albertsons, there really isn't going to be a whole lot as far as shopping. Now that we got the cons out of the way, let's look at the pros. And there's a whole lot of pros. I can't even get to them all. But I'm going to condense them into the main pros that I think are the most important. Cuna is a small town. It sits at about 27,000 people, and that's why many people like it. It's not like one of the bigger cities. Meridian's over 100,000 people. Nampa is just about 100,000 people, and Caldwell is going to be shortly after. Boise's got a ton of people. So in comparison, Cuna at 27,000, so many less people. It still has a small town vibe, while being close to all the big city amenities like Meridian. 15 minutes, you're in Meridian. You've got all the shopping and the big city amenities. Go right up Highway 69, aka Meridian Road, and you've got all that shopping while living in the small town. Attributed with the small town, everybody knows everybody, and people are so friendly, so welcoming. Because it's a small town, there is a ton of farmland, although it is quickly diminishing because of all the rapid growth that's occurring. Now, I saved this one for the last, and I'm not going to put it into either a pro or a con category because it has opportunities for each of them. But many of you have already found out that Meta, previously known as or also known as Facebook, is going to be building a data center in CUNA. It's just shy of a million square feet. So... I don't even think we have another building in the whole state that is even close to that million square foot mark. We have the Amazon Distribution Center in Nampa, but that's not even close to a million square feet. Now, there are some pros to that data center. It's going to bring jobs for construction. People need to build it, so it's going to employ a lot of construction workers around the valley. And once it is up and running, I think they estimated about 100 people are going to be employed there. Another pro about it is that they are donating money to the city to build a sewer system for the industrial park. Now, you may be thinking, CUNA has a sewer system issue, so this is a great thing about it. Although, that sewer system that they're going to be building doesn't even tie into the city's sewer system, so it's kind of like... I don't know, you draw your conclusions with that, but it's not going to solve the sewer system issue. Another possibility that a huge distribution center is going to bring is more people and more publicity to CUNA. So that small town vibe is likely going to grow up as some people are predicting. It's going to lose that small town charm. 27,000 has the potential to go up, especially with all the road construction that's going on outside of CUNA. Since it is one of the last cities in the valley to be developed, there's a great opportunity to learn from the mistakes of the surrounding cities. So what are your impressions about CUNA? I would love to hear it in the comments section below. If you like this video, you might like this one or this one. Until next week, I'm Isaac Crace with Top Idaho Real Estate, your third generation Idaho realtor. See ya.